Well, welcome to the December um, 14, 2022 City of Springfield License Commission meeting. Call this meeting to order at exactly 530. Um, first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for the Springfield Board of License Commissioners hearing held on Wednesday, November 30th, 2022. Did everyone have an opportunity to review the minutes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Any changes or um, corrections? No. No. Okay. Then I make a motion to accept the meetings. Um, um, the minutes from the uh, Wednesday, November 30th, 2022 License Commission meeting. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Okay, um, under continued um, new petitions, we have uh, a petition for a new license of late renewal for AMG Retail LLC doing business as Irving Local, located, I'm sorry, at 11 Tapley Street, Rebecca Dempsey, manager of Rexford. Who is here for um, AMG Retail? Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Okay, Rebecca. Um, so you have a, a, a late renewal? Yes. Excuse me for one moment, I apologize. I was on mute. I'm counsel of record also for AMG present. Okay, do you have a, a summary for us or anything you wanna say? Um, just very briefly, this is a, a late renewal. It was an application that uh, unfortunately didn't get renewed based on an, a misunderstanding. I think the person who was in charge of it may be out or on leave. Um, and so the deadline was accidentally missed. Um, it's the name of the um, the entity holding the license hasn't changed. AMG Retail One LLC It's doing business now as Sitco. Previously, it was Irving. Um, the address is 11 Tapley Street in Springfield. It's just a gas station and convenience store with one floor, one entrance exit, and is about uh, 400, or I'm sorry, 4,000 square feet, roughly. Uh, Miss Dempsey has been the acting manager. She was approved in November of 2022 by the ABCC. Okay. Okay, Ms. Dempsey, have you, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience? Have you been a manager, well, you, you've been a manager of record, acting manager of record, but have you been a manager of record before? Yes, I started in this company last year in August. I started as manager in training and in March I got my own store. And then in June, I moved here to this store. I'm here. 55 plus hours a week. So I, I know what's going on in the store like every second of the day. Okay. Where do you live in? In Westfield, Massachusetts. Okay. Any questions from the commissioners? Oh. Attorney Hogan, your the DBA is going to be Sitco. That's correct. So in this uh, renewal application, we're, we've, um, we're changing it also to the DBA Sitco. And you can use Sitco as a DBA? Yes, I think that's the brand. It was previously an Irving brand. But Sitco is the name of a corporation, right? There is a Sitco Corporation, but that's Sitco is uh, literally the the brand, if you will. Okay. Uh, so, have you checked off change of DBA on your application? Yes. Okay. So we're hearing a new late renewal with a change of DBA. Correct. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. Um, I make a motion that um, we accept the petition for a new license late renewal for AMG Retail LLC DBA with a new change of DBA to Sitco. 
located at 11 Capley Street, Rebecca Dempsey, manager of record. Second. Commissioner Cade. Yes. Commissioner Singator. Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio. Yes. Commissioner Ramirez. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Um, might I, I apologize, but might I bring one more thing to the commission's attention? There is a slight change also from the 2018 application that was approved. And it, it's simply that one of the indirect owners has, has changed, is no longer an indirect owner. It, where'd they go? They're gone. Yeah, so so the structure of the company was such that AMG Retail One LLC has always been the license holder. However, the 100% owner of AMG Retail One LLC was an entity called AMG Retail LLC without the mm -hmm. one. That was just a shell company. It was a pass-through company, and there was there was no real purpose of it. The owner below that was Atlantis Management Group 2 LLC, and that entity uh, is now the operating um, manager of AMG 1 LLC. And the owners of that have not changed except one owner is no longer um, holding an ownership interest in that entity. But you have not submitted that change to the local board or the ABCC yet? Um, the, the change has been raised with the board. Um, I, I have to prepare one affidavit for the ABCC per Ana Nieves, um, but that is, I believe, before the board today as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. What's before the board is the petition for the new license and the late renewal, that, that is not before the board today. Um, it's, so it's, it's the same application. I think it's just literally checking off the box change of owner and, and change of manager, but it, it's the same application. Mm, I didn't see anything well, in your application saying that the corporate structure was changing. Is, is well, it, it, it is in there. Yeah, it's different. It's it's changed from the 2018 application. It's it's a very minor change because literally it's just one of the um, pass through companies has been deleted essentially. Mm, this was this. I so mean, it's so on the our agenda is as in the application that's before the board. But it's on our agenda as a hearing for a new late renewal. <clears throat> it's not on our agenda for a change of corporate structure. Was it advertised like that? Um, no, that wasn't raised as an issue with the ABCC. They said that we were we, we would be allowed to do it in this manner. Um, Anna Nieves checked on that earlier for us today. <clears throat> Attorney Poe. Uh, I, I don't have any information with regards to Anna checking on that. So I, I just have what's on the agenda. I know the agenda was, mm. you know, already um, submitted prior to today. Um, so I, I don't think it's before the board today. So well, the, the you were telling us that Anna checked with the ABCC and they said that we could hear this as a new late renewal along with this corporate change, but it hasn't been advertised or on our agenda as that. And all you have to do is check a box on the application and submit an affidavit. That's what Anna reported to me today. The information is all in the application that has been submitted to the board. Um, it's, it's literally just, I have to provide an affidavit according to the ABCC. They're just interested in knowing what the difference between the 18 application was and this 22 application. And it's the, the change of the DBA and, and the omission of one shell pass-through company. AMG Retail One LLC is still the license holder. 
and and the folks that own the interest in these companies has not changed other than their interest uh, and one individual was removed as an owner. Nobody was added. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would state is that the, the notice of the meeting went out on December 9th. Um, so if she got back to you today, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it made the agenda as a part of the notice. No, it's not on the it, agenda. It didn't make it on the agenda. No. So at this point, I don't, I don't know whether. Mm, I, is there a reason you just didn't renew it the way it was, and then come back in January for this change? Well, you know, I think the reason would be that we were trying to fill out an accurate ac application. Um, it, oh. as honest and you know forthcoming as possible. And there was two slight changes, one being the DBA and one being the omission of one entity, um, which was simply a pass-through entity. Um, and, you know, I, we didn't want to sign an application that obviously wasn't correct. So we, we've included all those changes in the application that's before the board. Well, the application that I saw did not have change of DBA for one thing, and it, it did not have this change of corporate structure. All it was was a new license, late renewal. Uh, these, these uh, I don't know, this, this doesn't sound right to me. Okay, so um, I've been working with Anna on this, and um, she she picked up on the change of the DBA, and she asked us to submit uh, a new cover sheet with the DBA checked off, um, which we did. So um, I'm not sure if that that's not before you. Um, and it has was... to be advertised like that, and it has to be on our agenda like that. I, I think it was just... I mean, if it happened today, if this conversation with Ian happened today, then that is why it's not on the agenda for today. Because the agenda did come out, as Attorney Poe mentioned, on the 9th. Okay. Um, I know you don't want to hear well, this. Well, I'm my not sure how to be, My suggestion would be to this, continue this um, and submit the application with all the changes and we'll hear it on the 28th because this is two things that I didn't see on the application and we're not advertising are not on our agenda. One being a minor one, change of DBA, one being a pretty major one with the change of corporation. So. Oh, so, well, I hear you. Um, it's, it's not a change of corporation. The corporation is the same. Well, it's there's an, a change within the corporation, correct? It's not a change within this corporation. It's not a change of this license holder. It's a change of the owner of the license holder. So we removed one shell pass-through entity, but everybody, the, the AMG, it's uh, Atlantis Management, Group two LLC is still there. It's the same. It's now the hundred percent owner. So that entity has not changed. Um, and AMG Retail One LLC hasn't changed. It's, it's just an intermediary pass through company that's been omitted, not added. I'm not comfortable with this. So, uh, Attorney Paul, what would you recommend that we do? I recommend that we continue this to the next meeting on the 28th of December. Uh, with the suggested changes per, um, sent to the, the commission office and I get a copy of it and it has to be advertised and on the agenda that way. So, right. so that we can hear it. Yeah. Um, in the bad old days, you would have two days to drive to Boston with the changed uh, approved application in order to get be able to serve sell on January 1st. But I did check with Anna today and they are accepting the new late renewals via the portal. So even if we hear it on the 28th, 
uh, I would suggest that there's a good chance that the change, assuming we vote in favor, will be approved by the ABCC in time for the new license to be issued for the new year. So. Okay. Thank you. So I would make, how do we already voted to approve this? Can, what do we do? Vote to amend? I think we approved the license, the, re the late renewal mm -hmm. as it was yeah. presented to us. Yeah. Um, so we'd have to approve an am amendment when it comes before the before the commission. All right. Okay. So, so I, I, okay, go ahead, sorry. No, so December 27th, she comes in front of us again and we approve an amendment to her application or license is that correct i think we would be oh. approving a change of the dba and the um corporate structure at that point yes would that be an amendment or a whole new uh entity um i think the way it's been presented it would be an amendment but it was not even for discussion today, actually. So how can it be an amendment? That's a good question. Um, I, again, that's, it would be how it, can, it would be presented if it's being presented as a, a amended application. I'm not sure it would be. Um, it would be, I guess it's not an amendment. If I'm re-advertising, if I'm putting uh, notices out to a butters on this and uh, putting something in the newspaper, um, it's it, it, it would that su would suggest to me that it's a, a new change, a new application for that change, perhaps. That sounds about right. Yes. Okay. So we, are gonna, we are going to hear that on the 28th? This... 28th. Yes. Okay. And then it'll all get sent to Boston on the 28th or 29th. Right. Okay. I'm sorry about that, but... That's, it's understood. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you in two weeks. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Uh, our second item on the agenda is for change of manager for my Jonathan Pot Valley located at 153 Main Street from Kayla Rivera to Carlos Sarno manager record. Um, we did receive a, um, a letter, um, an email from the attorney uh, requesting that we continue um, this petition to December 28th, our next meeting. Second. Um, yes. So, so, so I make a motion that we continue the um, the petition for um, change of manager for My Jojo Inc. DBA Pop Belly Pub located at 153 Main Street from Kayla Rivera to Carlos Sarno manager record to December 28th, 2022. Second. Commissioner, um, Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Okay. Um, third item on the agenda is a petition for a change of manager for Springfield Liquor Mart Inc., DBA Springfield Liquor Mart, located at 1785 Allen Street from Thomas Waldron to Jerome Sh Shanahan? Shanahan. 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 Jerry, when was your meeting with the Holyoke License Commission? December 7th. So that application went maybe the next day to ABCC? Correct. And so you haven't gotten approval of that yet? Um, I haven't gotten notice of approval yet, no. Okay. 
Um, well, I, I think it would be premature to hear a change of manager for the Springfield location if the change of manager hasn't been a, a, approved of the Holyoke location. It was approved by the Holyoke board. It still have to right. be approved by the ABCC. Is that what you're right. saying? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. All right. So I don't know how I don't know how fast yeah. things are running there at this time of year because of what all was the rules. It, you just mentioned something about a portal or something I heard. Well, that's for the that's yeah it, the renewal all the oh okay it's different applications go through the portal. okay I'm sorry excuse I me I don't know how quickly they act on them okay hopefully hopefully for AMG retail it's very quick right. yeah yeah I hate um, you. so I don't know whether to hear. Uh, it, so I'm comfortable you, with the 28th if that's what you're comfortable with. Right, so you're not represented by council. You're just here yourself. I'm just here myself. So yep. We're here on the 28th and you still haven't been approved. We can move to January. Okay. So does that sound reasonable? It's reasonable Re with me. Okay. I would make a motion to continue this until December 28th. Second. Second. Thank you, everyone. Commission Happy holidays. Well, we have to vote. Commissioner Kane. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Singator. Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio. Yes. Commissioner Ramirez. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa. Yes. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. You sure. too. Happy holidays. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, Thanks Peter. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Um. Next item on the agenda is um, informational hearing um, for Olympic Restaurant located at 232 Chestnut Street. Um, Julia? Julia. Sita, Julia, sit up manager of record discussion about staying open until 3 a.m. for takeout only. Um, anybody here for Olympic? No. Okay. Who, who is Ana Rivera? Ana Rivera. I believe that's a citizen um, listening in. Um, I did check the waiting room to verify that there was no one there waiting. There's no one waiting in the waiting room. Okay. Um, sh should can we still discuss this um, informational hearing? Though no one for Olympic is here. I would say no. No. Okay. I don't think it would be fair to, to discuss it or make a decision with her, right. without her being here. Without her here. Okay. Then I make a motion that we continue the um, informational hearing for Olympic Restaurant located at 232 Chestnut Street. Um, Jagalia, Instead of manager of record discussion about staying open till 3 a.m. for takeout only um, for second. December 28th. Is there second. a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Okay. That's how we do it. We just continue everything. That's right. <laughs> and then we'll find ourselves overwhelmed <laughs> the next meeting. <laughs> okay, so we have the um, redacted reports for the um, incident reports. Um, so we'll look at the list that Ina sent us Aquarius incident on in um, October 29, 2022. Do you have a, an opportunity to read yes. the report? Yes. Yeah. Any questions, concerns? No? No. No. Then I make a motion that we take no act. Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Okay. Um, second is McCarthy Tavern. Um, everyone have an opportunity to read it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I make a, a motion that we take no action for McCarthy's. Second. Okay. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? 
Yes. Commissioner Ramirez. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa. Yes. <laughs> Jans is really, Jan's a, very happy because he's going on vacation tomorrow. <laughs> okay. oh. Who's going, Johnny? Yes. Oh, really? Where are you going? Florida. Oh, where? Nice. Kissing me. Kiss, uh, nice. Kissing me in Haines nice. City. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> um, okay. I have a question, Barry. Uh, McCarthy's Tavern. Did, did the bartender say why she was fired? She didn't, the owner, or the man, I should say the manager of record, who I also believe is the owner, he did when I spoke to her. He just wasn't happy with her. Uh, he, he felt like maybe her and her boyfriend were part of the problem there, maybe. Really? That's kind of how it came across to me when I spoke to him. Oh, all right. See this woman out there trying to break up a knife fight and stuff, and then <laughs> she gets fired. That didn't seem very fair. <laughs> Being a hero. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, our next one is 1636 North and 222 Worthington Street. What a mess. <laughs> Big mess. Um, I know that Barry and I have been on the phone and, and Alicia, we've been on the phone a lot. Um regarding both 1636 North and 222 Worthington. Um, so these two places don't have, um, 222 Worthington doesn't have a liquor license and 1636 doesn't have a common Vic license. However, um, 1636 North is open for business and um, someone is host, um, hosting parties at 222 um, Worthington Street. So, and you know, this is an ongoing, an ongoing issue. Not Barry, if you wanna chime in and talk about what's been going on. So, basically, without getting to all the details, it's kind of a feud between the landlord of the building and Dewey's Jazz Lounge um, and the people next door. So if you're not familiar, 1636 North um, and 222 Worthington Street are in the same building as Dewey's Lounge. Um, apparently, and this is from talking to both sides, some, they're not paying rent, the other one's not paying his taxes. Um, in essence, 1636 North and 222 Worthington Street, neither one has licenses. Um, they were both issued cease and desist orders on November 9th for unlicensed activity. Um, I know um, Commissioner Signator had sent an email to everyone earlier of an uh, event they have planned there. I believe it was on Christmas night or uh, whatever date it is. I'll forward that to our um shift commander and make sure they keep an eye out. I mean, there should be no activity at either location. They don't have licenses. They can't be issued one day licenses until their uh, outstanding financial obligations to the city are resolved, which uh, doesn't sound like that's gonna be anytime soon. So yeah, is this rest, this is a, this 1636 North is a, a restaurant? They serve it, food? It is. Yes, it is. But they, they do not have a common VIC. Um, when I went there and served the order, there were seats in there, tables. Uh, I told the guy, no one could, there can be no dine-in. I think he said most of their business at this point is um, DoorDash and takeout. But there were tables in there, he was advised. Um, and, and again, I know there's going to be, it, it sounds like the 222 Worthington Street, between the, the people that were running that I, I, illegally and the landlord, it sounds like they have plans to apply for a liquor license. But at this point, those cannot be granted, approved until all their obligations are met. Um, and, and and like I said, it sounds like, you know, the landlord's not 
he's not, his, no one's paying him rent. So he's not paying taxes and they're just calling on each other back and forth, back and forth. Um, you know, there's, you'll see number nine for Dewey's jazz lounge. That's kind of the other side of this, that them saying, Hey, you know, he's got a midnight closing and he's staying open past midnight. Um, and it's just been going back and forth really for over the last month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the tenants are complaining too about the noise as well, right? So it, that's, it's actually both ways. So it started off that Dewey's was complaining about the noise from 222 uh, Worthington, which brought our attention to the unlicensed activity. Uh, they were served cease and desist orders. And shortly thereafter, we started getting complaints about the noise from Dewey's. Um, but that, uh, that came from a tenant in the building. So if you're not familiar, there's apartments right above Dewey's. Um, and I, I spoke to that complainant who I believe might be the one on this hearing tonight. Um, you know, and I kind of explained to her the city noise ordinance. Um, you know, it's not 50 feet away. Like she literally lives directly above them in the same building. And, she, you know, she understood that when she moved there. I think her issue is like after hours activity, like, you know, certain nights it was a 12 midnight closing. She was at, right. but went on midnight, then she kind of has an issue with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just yeah. not a good situation. Right. So the, the at issue is this 1636 and they don't have, so there's unlicensed activity still going on there. And what can the commission do about unlicensed activity? Uh, that seems to be a police and law department issue, not a commission issue. Correct. So this report was submitted to you just to make you aware because you're going to see the other side of it as well. So just so you kind of saw both sides, um, okay. but that they, they are connected. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously they, you're right. They have no license. So you, you can't act, you, you can't punish them in any way. They, they don't have a license at this point. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure what the law department, once the cease and desist orders were served and issued, um, you know, I'm not sure what their next step is. Obviously, the police department, all we can do is if we get a complaint, we can go there and shut down the activity and forward a report to the law department. Does this, so, Barry, I'm sorry, does Barry, does this almost fall underneath the entertainment license? Uh... So they don't even have entertainment licenses. There's no, <laughs> that's, that's kind of the issue. Yeah, their doors shouldn't be open at all. Yeah, right. They're just doing what they want there. Right. Mm -hmm. so okay. They can serve food, takeout. They can't have dine-in, right? Because all they right. need for a takeout would be a health permit, which I'm assuming they have. Um, I, I know when I spoke uh, with the licensing department, neither location had any licenses issued to them. No. Wow. Hmm. Well, as I, I I chatted with Rosa this afternoon about this, and I'm thinking back to, if you all remember, the unlicensed, uh, I don't know if it was a graduation party or whatever, many years ago, uh, which resulted in the stabbing death of a Cathedral High School student. And uh, there were a lot of very concerned calls that next morning when I came into work, who has the license, who blah, blah, blah. And nobody had a license. It was it was somebody just bought a building or rented a building and opened up an illegal bar there and rented it out for this party. And we had no idea that this was happening. And on, in this situation, we kind of do know something's going on there. And if there, if I believe this report said something about people exiting the building, or somebody told me about people exiting the building with alcohol, 
and so there are there's alcohol either being served or sold there which is also illegal and we have reports about that so uh, there will be some uncomfortable conversations had if there's actually a violent disturbance there stabbing shooting god forbid and the commission's going to be asked if there's a license and we're going to say no but you know we do have these all these reports so this i don't know what what action to take i don't know what department it sounds like um just keep this on the police radar and call call the barry do they call the commission uh, the, the police 911 and say you know the un, unlicensed activity is taking place at 222 worthington street and do those officers have the authority to go in and just shut the place down they do i mean if it's open to the public and they're they're not then uh, obviously you can um kind of off the topic i mean uh, you guys approved a license for el ambiente on bay street um and there's similar events happening there right now apparently that license got sent back from the abcc um it said returned no action um and when I asked about it, I was told they have six months to fix whatever had to be fixed. But in the meantime, they're doing the same thing. They're having after hours parties. And when the officers go there, they won't even open the door. Um, so, I, I mean, again, I think this is, you know, in the past, I know we've worked with all the city departments, you know, like attorney days would forward an email. Um, I know he's retired now, but the guy from, code enforcement uh and he would just bring everyone in the city and they'd go to a location and basically shut it down i mean i i don't know if that's what has to be done here um i just don't know how this issue is going to be resolved these people want to have a business there but at this point clearly they can't because of the obligations that are outstanding um so something has to happen by January 1st because the taxes are going to have to be paid or there's not going to be any license for Dewey's either. Right. January 1st. But clear, but apparently there's something happening on Christmas with an ugly sweater and it might be ugly sweater and alcohol. <laughs> right. And I don't know if there's other things. I just got this one thing today. I don't know if there's other events floating around out there on Facebook or Instagram or wherever they put this stuff um, that are coming up. So this is not good. So these so, these so, events, I'm sorry, Attorney Poe, go ahead. Oh, just because Barry, I, I know that we had issued the cease and desist letter and it went out. And it was my understanding was their response was they canceled the last event and they they told you they weren't going to be doing anything and then we get the notice from peter today that that they are doing this and and, I, and my, my understanding was they were the food they're, they're selling food or something um but that's the board of health and i i i guess um have we got any verification on anything well let me let me put it this way lisa was going to have a uh uh, a conversation, Alicia, Attorney Days was going to have a conversation with um, the, the commissioner of, of health. Um, and I just don't know what the result of that conversation was, but hopefully I think we were moving down the line of trying to get everything cut off so that they can't do anything. Um, that's my understanding. Well, the health department uh, does have the authority to pull uh, any kind of uh, health or food service license or for unpaid financial obligation they can use that if they if they want to um public but, safety i think at this point is priority i think the idea was we didn't know who like the people who were actually in the um operating this mm. I mean, it wasn't the owner of the building we did send it to the building owner and the people who who who, who were there that we knew of right Barry? So when I went there, right, there was a, a, a male and a female um, 
so the the, the male kind of was uh, he's the 1636 north guy the food guy right so he, he was there and the female that was there was his girlfriend um i think they're both kind of running or were running stuff out of 222 and they do it through there's an interior door so if you walk into 1636 north there's a door to the right that connects to 222 and the day i went in there they had like big tables set up they uh in the event you're referring to i believe it was around thanksgiving they had something planned and they both are you know they told me right then that's not going to happen and that didn't happen and you know we assumed there had been no issues there we were aware of um, until uh, Commissioner Espinoza over the weekend had sent a complaint about noise coming from there again. And then today when uh, Commissioner Signator sent that email with that advertisement. So I don't know if they've changed their mind. When I was there, they were cooperative. Uh, the landlord, I didn't speak to him there, but I spoke to him on the phone. He actually called my office and um, was kind of, you know, I, I think he was upset that we had served cease and desist orders to, to these two tenants. Um, but, but as I explained to him, I, you know, that's, they have a license and they can't get one now. And that's when he kind of told me about all the behind the scenes stuff going on uh, with Dewey's and him and the people next door. Well, if he wants to, you know, well, if he wants to play this uh, cat and mouse game with Dewey because uh, Dewey's not paying him rent and he's not paying the taxes, that, that applies to everybody in both buildings, not just Dewey. And right. what's good for the goose is good for the gander there. If he, you know, his he can't give some tenants permission to open businesses there and, and then try to punish others. That's yeah. not fair. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I, again, like you said, there has to be a resolution to this, you know, because if not, there's no one can be open. If that if right. that aren't paid by January 1st, then the license won't be issued. And basically, that's what's going to happen as of the 1st. Am I correct? Uh, unless somebody comes to me with a check for over $40,000, yes. Okay. Hmm. They haven't paid bid fees in I think three years they haven't paid taxes in two so it's a big bill okay. yeah with the holidays coming up somebody's going to try to sneak an event in there I'm sure yeah. mm -hmm. I can see an event on Christmas and New Year's Eve mm -hmm. <laughs> yep do you have an ugly sweater Johnny uh, He's not going to be here. <laughs> I'm sure I have a couple somewhere. <laughs> okay, uh, so even if the health department came in and pulled um, the license for 1636 North, we will still have the problem with 222 Worthington because at the end of the day, they don't have a license at all. No. It's just open space that is being utilized by um, 1636 North. Yeah. So they can continue to have their parties, their events. Well, it appears they're going to. Right. Um, I, I think. I mean, I think that, and I was talking to um, Peter earlier today, and, you know, the frustration comes from the fact that, you know, what's going to happen, what can be done, and I understand that our hands are tied, right, but, you know, what is there to for us to do or for the city to do, because at the end of the day, you know, if something happens, if there's a shooting, a stabbing, something happens, um, is, is that when everyone is going to, yeah. to do something about it? You know, so we don't want to get there. We want to stop this before, you know, there is some type of incident. Absolutely. Should uh, some communication come from the board to uh, the mayor? 
Mm -hmm. just say, you know, we are aware of unlicensed activity taking place in these buildings and our hands are tied because we don't license them, but we want to make sure that you are aware that there's a potential for a problem here. And then maybe the mayor will, you know, call in, like uh, Barry said, call in the various departments, code enforcement, health, and just, uh, you know, all, I think, what was Mayor Sarno? The full force of the city will come down upon them. Mm -hmm. And was, was, was a notice sent to the owner of the building in, in his home in Long Meadow? Oh, but you had a conversation with him. I did. Oh. Um, one was sent. I know his was mailed. I want to, I don't know if it was mailed to his house. I do know one was sent to Worthington Street. Mm -hmm. Homie as an office actually in the basement of 1636 <laughs> <laughs> I but because when he called complain do we stay open late? He said he had video, he wanted me to get his video. And I, you know, I don't think our video guy ever even got you know, we, we retrieve video from the um, city cameras. Mm -hmm. Uh but yeah, I'm not sure if they did um that. Okay. Um, so how do we, um, I mean, what do we do with this, with this complaint? I mean, there is no one to bring in for pre-hearing conference or informational meeting. So I think the complaint was put in front of us, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Barry, just for uh, uh, inform information and awareness. I think like Barry, like uh, Peter said, this has to basically go to the mayor's office and the mayor's office is going to have to take uh, charge, if you want to say, and, and, and go to the agencies that could help and try to wrap this up. Um, I don't think we have any authority at this moment because mm -hmm. they have no license or nothing. So we got nothing. Correct. Yep. So, so Attorney Paul, do we make a motion that this be forwarded to the mayor's office? Um, I, I guess if you wanted to create a record to, of do, to do that, um, you can do that. Okay. So I submit a, a motion to this be forwarded to the mayor's office for further investigation. Okay. Okay. Um, I know the motion has been made. It looks like someone from 636 North is trying to join. Yeah, so. <clears throat> okay. I, I second Johnny's motion. Second Johnny's motion. Okay. Um, Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner D. Angel Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, this will be forwarded to the mayor's office. Okay. Thank you. Madam, Madam Chair, maybe yes. just for informational purposes, if that motion could be restated. Um, Johnny? Yes. Can you restate I'm, your motion? I will put motion to receive my motion until, until we hear further here. I'm no, sorry. No. Wait, wait. You can't do that. Just, I just wanted to re the motion to be restated. Right. Restated. I'm sorry. That's it. He wants you to restate it, <laughs> Johnny. Your I did. Yeah. Yes. No. Yes. No. Let me. Let me. Let me just try to. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm trying to do. So, so the commission just voted to forward the issue of illegal activities at um, at sixteen thirty six North and two twenty two Worthington Street to the mayor to take additional action. Yes, that's correct. John that's said it. investigation, but uh, action, I think it's better word. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. it. 
Now, Madam okay. Chair, we can move on to the next agenda item. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Next item Wait is a minute. Ro Rosa. Get, get, you and I had a, a chat today about uh, non-licensed premises continuing to take do business in the face of a cease and desist order from the the law department, Correct. and we don't know what the status of those four license. There's four. four. I found it. I found it in my notes. Okay. Uh, Cornerstone Cafe at One Monarch Place, as as mean cuisine, which is gone now, right? It, isn't yes. that yeah? Okay. Uh Houston Enterprises, DBA KFC at 632 State Street, and Belmont Donuts doing business as Dunkin' Donuts at 3065 Main Street. We discussed these months ago, and uh I think Johnny has. Uh, Barry, if he was going to go out there with chains and a padlock and just <laughs> chain them up, and we never we never found out what happened. Are all of these licenses these come in compliance, or are they all still operating on December fourteenth without a twenty twenty two license? So, uh, I would make a I will make a can I make a motion? Yes. Yeah, I make a motion that we have a status for the next hearing on the 28th on Cornerstone Cafe, One Monarch Place, Hello. Houston Enterprises, DBA Hi. KFC at okay. 632 Can State Street. Talking? And um, who's talking? Excuse me, 1636. Uh, Can you mute yourself? Thank you. And uh, Houston Enterprises DBA KFC located at 632 State Street and Belmont Donuts DBA Dunkin' Donuts at 3065 Main Street uh, uh, on the status of whether they have renewed their 2022 license. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Okay. I don't want to lose track of that. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, next item on the agenda is the J and J package store incident for um October 26, 2022. Um I make a motion to take no action. Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Next item is J and J package store incident on October 28, 2022. I make a motion to take no action. Yeah, second. Commissioner uh, Cade? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Um, next item, the Ale House, November 7th um, incident. There was um, a stabbing. I make a motion, take no action. Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner Diego Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Um, four Spark Liquors. Um, four Spark Liquor, um, they did um, sell alcohol to a minor. So there is a um, violation. So I make a motion that um, we bring them in for a pre hearing conference. Second. Commissioner Kaye? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Theodore's um, incident on November 15. I um, make a motion to take no action. Second. Commissioner Kay? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. 
Himmel Bar and Grill on November incident for November 6, 2022. Make a motion, no action. Make a motion for what? To take no action. Second. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Um, next item is Dewey's Jazz and Lounge, 232 Worthington Street. Um, so we have um, two counts remaining open beyond license hours for um, November 10th, November 11th, and well, November 10th to November 11th, and then November 23rd on to the 24th. Um, I make a motion um, for that we bring them in for a pre-hearing conference. Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Um, Marley Bar and Grill incident on November 13th, 2022. I make a motion to take no action. Do, Second. We, do we care that they did did not call the police? This is the only one incident report where the police weren't called. Right. I read it I, because it said that it was closing time and the person, um, they made sure the person had left. That's the only, you know. The only reason, but I'm I'm open to um, commissioners if you have other suggestions. The uh, the victim there also said there was a cruiser on scene because she told me the same officers responded to her house later to take the report. When I talked to the manager there, um, she wasn't positive, but she thought there was a cruiser outside at closing time as well. So basically. Uh, the, the, the victim, when I spoke to her, said the way it happened, the lady just walked up to her, do you remember me, hit her. And she said, there's really nothing the staff could have done. And she said, and that basically ended it. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if that, that helps you make your decision at all, but she said there was a cruiser there because the same officers responded to her house later and took a report. Okay. No action is good for me. Yeah, because I can see them not calling because they're seeing a cruiser out front. So, okay. do we Second. move move forward with um, the motion for to yeah. take no action? Yes. yes. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Cade. Yes. Commissioner Singator. Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio. Yes. Commissioner Ramirez. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Um, Solomar Restaurant and Bar incident for November 24th. Uh, make a motion to take no action. Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Um, top shelf. Uh, we have an uh, incident for of November 1st, 2022. Um, any did, did everyone read it? I yes. any suggestions on this one? Top shelf. I missed that one. I missed that one as well. Huh? Well, it's it's not in the on the agenda, but we did get a report for it. Right. That's what I thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that item number 12? Entertainment district incident or is that separate? No. No, this is a separate one. Um hey, Peter, you want to read it? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty long. Uh let's see if I still have it. I some of them open here. Uh, 
I was a little disturbed by a comment that one of the bouncers made. Um, on November 1st, at 20, tw November 1st, 2022, at 140 AM, officers were doing a directed patrol in the area of 240 Chestnut Street top shelf during bar let out when a fight broke out in the parking lot on Frank B. Murray side of the street. It was later determined that this fight occurred across the street uh, on, in the parking lot of 125 Liberty Street, the Liberty Medical Arts Building. This is this lot is north of Top Shelf on the other side of Frank B. Murray Street. The officers observed multiple females involved in the fight and acted to separate the parties. Officers de deployed their pepper spray, which had the desired effect. One female continued to fight back and officers placed her in handcuffs. This female <laughs> later stated her leg hurt and fell to the ground. The officer then saw blood coming down her leg and located a stab wound to her left thigh area. The very famous historical, I didn't know I was stabbed. <laughs> I, I still don't understand how people did not know they were stabbed. The officer, uh, officers provided first aid until an ambulance arrived on scene to transport the victim to the hospital. Other officers arrived to assist with crowd control and two other people were arrested for interfering. Attached our narratives from the incident report as well as a special report by Officer Thomas Tans. This special stated that security from top shelf was on scene and was asked to help move people along, but told Officer Vergara that it's not their problem and walked away. I have a little issue with that. Um, the report also states that it was later determined that the fight stemmed from a previous incident that took place inside the bar between the female victim and another female. Security removed the other female, the aggressor, but she waited in the parking lot until the bar let out. I reviewed CAD using the parameters of 12 to 3 a.m., there were two calls for service related to this incident. The first call for service was for disturbance initiated at 1.14 a.m. Based on the narrative entered for this call for service, the calling party called the police after being assaulted by another female near the bathroom and top shelf. The caller stated she had a restraining order against the female who assaulted her and her girlfriend as she was coming out of the bathroom. The caller indicated she was outside but the suspect was still inside top shelf. The responding officers cleared this call, unable to locate, and noted that they did not locate the caller or her vehicle. It was later determined that the calling party is a suspect in the stabbing that happened at closing time. The second call for the ser for service was this for a stabbing victim initiated at 1.44 a.m. by the officers on the scene. On November 10th, 2022, I spoke to Carlos Melendez, the manager of record at Top Shelf. He advised me that he was present on November 1st and indicated it was not busy. He confirmed there had been an issue by the bathroom about a half an hour before closing time involving a few females. He described this as a domestic dispute and stated that there were no there was no physical altercation, just a verbal argument. He added that his staff intervened and removed the aggressor from the club. He stated that at closing time, his staff clears the parking lots that are in close proximity to the establishment, specifically the lot on the south and west side of their property, which would be across Liberty uh, Chestnut Street. He indicated that his staff has been advised not to cross the street off of their property to clear patrons from any of the nearby lots. He explained the reason for this is their security is not armed, and he pointed out an incident last year at a parking lot across the street in which several of his staff were criminally charged. Mr. Melendez stated that he and his staff were aware that officers were already on scene, and he was not aware the officers asked one of his employees for assistance in moving the crowd along. He added that no officer approached him and explained Again, his reasoning for his staff not clearing the lot at 125 Liberty Street where the incident occurred. On November 10th, I reviewed the case activity notes associated with this incident. Detective Bergdahl noted that he spoke to the victim briefly on the phone and made an appointment for her to view photos and give a statement. The victim never showed up for the appointment and stopped answering his phone calls. Detective Bergdahl 
Also noted that the telephone numbers for the two witnesses are wrong numbers or not in service. Due to the constraints of the criminal justice systems, I am unable to contact the arrestees or the calling party for the disturbance call as the suspect, as she is the suspect in the stabbing. So that is the incident report. So Peter, um, where it says um, that they clear specifically the lot on the south and west, yeah. um, my understanding is that they only clear the um, the parking that's on the other side of Olympic Delhi, and then on the other side, not across the street where the um, oh. where the Red Cross used to be. That lot's closed now. Um, oh. I don't recall mm -hmm. what they're referring to across the street. It was about it's a where there was a video in several of his staff members ended up being criminally charged. Um, so basically they clear the lot by Olympic Deli, which is the South, and then the West would be like behind their building. There's a small lot there. Oh, that little lot behind. Right. Okay. Correct. Right. So I, the way he's saying it is, you know, the officers are asking his staff to go to 125 Liberty. And, you know, after what happened last year there, that's, I think they've been advised by their attorney that, you know, number one, they aren't armed. People right. are going to cars. And the same thing kind of happened last year where a weapon was taken from a car. And, and I think that's their reasoning. Um, and they knew the officers were there already. Okay. Um, is, I mean, is, is everyone satisfied? Um, to take no action, or anybody want to bring them in for pre hearing? What would be the pre hearing? For? Um, no. the fact that, um, well, I wasn't sure on this one, that's why I, I put a question mark. So I can go ahead and make a motion that we take no action. Second. Okay, Commissioner K. Yes. Commissioner Singator. Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio. Yes. Commissioner Ramirez. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa. Yes. Um, the other two are entertainment district, and we don't hear um, the entertainment um, district. <clears throat> I do have a question, Attorney Paul. Um, I know that, um, what is it, um, 1636 North is here and that she did send a, a message that she's here in case we have any questions. Um, I, I do want to wanted to tell you that we've already heard 1636 North and um, Attorney Poe, I just, you know, um, don't know if um, it's, you know, if we should um, talk about it again or not. I don't, I don't, I think for informational purposes, if there's, if the commissioners have questions that they, <clears throat> or, 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 sorry, I don't think that they're necessary. I don't think that we're opening, re reopening what the action that we took. Um, right. So if commissioners have questions and they feel like they want to ask those questions, I'd leave it to the, com you know, the commission to make the determination. So it's at your leisure, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any questions for thir um, 1636 North from the commissioners? Uh, I have a question. Are you aware that you should not be serving food without a common victualler license? You're muted. Yep, you should mute it. You should mute it. Mm 
I sent her a message asking her to unmute. She, uh, well, she's coming back. Hi, sorry about that. Did you hear the question? I did not, I apologize. Um, are you aware that you should not be serving food without a common victualler license issued by the License Commission? We were not aware of that until um, Mr. De La Murder made us aware about it. Uh, we assumed that when I, when we, before we opened business, I called the city ourselves and asked for requirements for everything that we needed. We told we were needed a business license and the health permit. And if we were going to serve liquor, we would need a liquor license. Um, I was not aware of that. Um, since then, I have spoke with Alicia Days herself, and she walked me through the steps of everything that we do require. Um, I asked if it was okay for us to still provide takeout services and third-party delivery services. And uh, she told us that it was okay to still provide the takeout services. Um, since then, we have removed all seating from 1636 North. Barry, can you go by and verify that? I, I can. Um, what time would be a good time tomorrow to stop by there? Whatever works for you, Barry. Um, anything after nine, I drop my daughter off at school. Okay. Um, why don't we say like 10 o'clock? Will that work? That's fine. Okay. I'll meet you there just to check and confirm. No worries. So um, if you'd like to take a look at 222 uh, as well. Um, my boyfriend will be here to allow that also. Um, there's no seating at 222. Um, there were events that were previously scheduled, but since the first cease and desist, all of those events have been canceled. Watch like that. Do you have some sort of relationship with who is operating whatever they're doing at 222? Yes, that is my long-term boyfriend. We've been together for almost 13 years. Oh. Okay. Well, I would recommend that you not do anything at 222 Worthington Street. So the plan for 222 Worthington Street is a collaborative space offering event space available for rentals. It's what our original plan is set to be. Okay, but you need a license for that. Correct. And as of the moment, with the financial issues that are happening with the landlord, we understand that everything is on hold until that is rectified. Okay. And you have you have no entertainment at uh, 1536 or whatever. 1636. No, there is not. Okay. We have never had entertainment here. Okay. Was there was there an event on Saturday at 222 Worthington? No, ma'am. the city can gladly run back the cameras on Worthington Street to prove that. In this particular event, um, the, the ugly sweater event is canceled. All of the parties that were involved with those events were already notified that those events were canceled when we were served the cease and desist notice. Okay. And all deposits have been returned. Okay. Hey. Anybody else has any, any questions? No. no. Okay. Thank you Thank for your you time, so everyone. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um. Then if if we don't have, um... I have something. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, we have a few package store, few package stores who have very large violations from the health department, and it, it has they're tobacco related. And I don't, and I'm not sure whether it's a selling to minors or um, meant selling menthol cigarettes. And the, my collection system says selling to minors, but I don't know if they have the methyl violation in there yet, but the violation is $1,000. And we had one, a few of them called me because they are trying to appeal these violations. 
and uh, they are in court, but the court is operating very slowly. And they were concerned that they would not have their day in court and have a decision made before the end of the year. And they wanted to know what to do. So with my collector hat on, I said, pay the violation to get it cleared for your license. And if, if and when you do get your day in court, if the violation is abated by the court, then you will get a refund from the health department. And one of them followed that advice and paid. He had $2,000 violation. And the other one is um, Frank's and they have a $1,000 violation and they don't want to pay. They want to get their day in court. And I suggested that they wait until December 28th, which is our last hearing, and to to see whether they actually have a decision from the court or not. And if they don't, then the commission may grant them an informational hearing and based on what they tell us, decide whether the violation needs to be paid or whether we're a lot going to allow them to get their 2023 license with the violation outstanding with the understanding that it'll be resolved at some point in 2023. So uh, I don't know what everybody thinks about that. But if, anybody? We'd have to put them on the next agenda for an informational hearing if we are in. But I don't know what more they're gonna tell you than what I've already told you, other than the fact that they still haven't had their hearing. Right. Um, thoughts, anybody? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you suggest? I, I think, I, I think oh. we should still put them on the, on the hearing. On the agenda? Uh, on the agenda. For next, next yeah, meeting? Yeah, and we'll, we'll determine then if we need to put it again on the next agenda for the next time. I believe that they, uh, anyone who is uh, delinquent has a, uh, the right to have a hearing before the board, although um, those quickly uh, became, when we first started the tax certification process way back in 2005 or four, um, they proved pretty useless because the board can't waive taxes or fees for the from the city and we just tell them okay you we've heard you but you have to pay your bill um in this instance they're asking for uh perhaps some leniency before they are heard by the court but in any event johnny uh i, I agree that we should at least grant them a hearing and then make a decision i'm Peter, i'm okay Peter, okay uh, if you know, have, have they had the hearing and they're waiting for the court to make a decision or are they waiting for their hearing? I believe they're waiting for the hearing. Okay. So it could take months. Well, they've been on the, they've been scheduled for a while, but it keeps, you know. Being postponed probably. Yeah, yeah it is. Well, you know, one of the violations, I said, well, you know, this was from May. So when did you start this process? And, uh, because if you, you know, if it was a violation from November and you just, uh, up, you know, appealed, then that's one thing. If the violation from May and you just appealed, you know, you've known about this for a long time. So um, I would have to look up their partic that particular violation and see when it was, but I think it was fairly recent. So should we just put them on for the 28th and let them give their story? I'm okay with that. I'm in agreement. All right. So I would make a motion that we put uh, Frank's package store on the uh, a meeting, uh, the hearing agenda for the 28th for their uh, tobacco violation. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Singator? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. 
Commissioner Espinosa, yes. So the, the commission office attorney poll will notify them of that informational hearing? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Okay, I make a motion to, if we don't have anything else. I'll Do we still have the two Springfield Parking Authority complaints to? Those are entertainment district. Oh, okay. We yeah, we gotcha. usually don't, don't hear entertainment district. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Unless you want to read through them, Maria will. I, I did, and I came no action. <laughs> no <way. laughs> All right. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, Merry everybody. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy yes. holidays. All yeah. right. Johnny, think about us when you're in the sun. In the Enjoy. Yeah. Have a great nice time. I'm going to be like Peter. Peter thinks about us when he goes down to Florida. Yeah, I do. I do. Yes. <laughs> I bring my laptop and I zoom in. So we'll see you on the 28th. <laughs> All right. Take care. Okay. Okay. I'm, I make a mo I make oh. a motion to adjourn. Second. Um, Six forty-seven. Um, Commissioner K. Yes. Commissioner Singator. Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio. Yes. Commissioner Ramirez. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa. Yes. Good night. Merry Christmas, Good night. everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good night.